When your to-do list feels longer than your day, when you're buried and almost panicked trying to catch up and keep up, my next guest says one question can help you feel calm and in control. Natty Lewis is an emotional performance coach who has four strategies to stop feeling behind. I feel like you are speaking to every woman. That's the best. Every woman yes. feels that need to catch up or keep up and it's perpetual, yeah. like one day to the next. Do you hear that from the women you work with? Every day. Yeah, most women are running their life on a schedule and not on purpose, and that really leaves them feeling behind. Well, let's get to this question. When we're feeling behind, you first want us to stop and ask, behind what? Yeah, most women, as I ask them, what are you, what are you behind? You feel behind, behind what? I asked a young mom, she had two children, a four-year-old and a two-year-old, and she said, I'm always behind, Natty, I'm always behind. I said, behind what? She said, my day? I said, well, what is your day supposed to look like? Mm. And she goes, I, I don't know. I said, what would it look like if you were ahead of your day? Mm. She said, I, I, I don't know. She couldn't even articulate or no. define it. And I said, what would it look like if you were on top of your day? Yeah. I, I don't know. And I said, isn't it interesting? We can't, we can't find what we can't see, what we don't even know what we're looking for. We just feel this burden of expectation that's never even been defined. We don't even know how we defined it. And so I said, let's like my teenage son who walks to my fridge right after I stocked it with Costco, opens the door and says, I have nothing to eat in this fridge. <laughs> I said, oh, there's plenty to eat. You uh -huh. just don't know what you're looking for, right? Uh -huh. So as women, we feel behind. Why? Behind what? So What's your that, expectation? To that point, okay, a little bit of expectation, but what I'm hearing you describe is really internal. Yes. It's not the to-do list. It's not what the laundry pile. It's not the grocery shopping. It's a feeling. Well, it's a feeling that's coming from feeling like all of those things are expectations, but who set them? Mm. Who set the expectation? I mean, but to some extent, I have to do the laundry. I have to go grocery shopping. For sure. Yeah, so there's a balance there. There's a balance, and part of it has to do with when those things happen and how we put them into our day. Mm -hmm. And that really leads us into our second piece, which is our how we see ourselves, our identity. I wear, when I work with women all over the place and they talk to me about who they are, they use the word mom as if it's like this label, this stamp that they hold onto. The, and the, how, who's defining what that mom looks like? Society? Community? What your mother did? My mother ironed my soccer jerseys. Now, I don't know about you, but I have no time for ironing soccer jerseys, right? If I was trying to hold myself to that expectation, yeah. I'd be behind too. So there is a definition that comes into play, a self-definition. And you need to decide what that is for you and stop taking on the world's definition of motherhood. Hmm. I, I was not the kind of typical mom that played with pink and Barbies, right? But my daughter was a drama daughter. She wanted to be on stage, she wanted to be in drama, and so I showed up with the drama moms. I showed up with a t-shirt hat and sh uh, shorts and flip-flops with a camera taking in notes about how to do film. You did it your way. Uh, yeah, I did it my way. Yeah. And that was because that's how I was gonna show up. I could have been behind all the other moms because I didn't know how to do the makeup and the hair. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't behind, I was just me. And as we shift that picture, that expectation, mm -hmm. then what happens? Well, what happens is we start to realize that we're not behind, we're right on time. Take the young mom with a two-year-old who has decided that her, her two-year-old has just made his own concrete decision for the day, that he's gonna dress himself. Mm. Now you have places to be and a schedule and this two-year-old taking 45 minutes to figure out there's two holes in those pants, not one, <laughs> that's not in your schedule, yeah. right? Yeah. And then when you get to the grocery store, that, two, that same two-year-old that wants to scan the groceries, uh -huh. that's not in your schedule because he keeps missing. And after the 14th time he's missing and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't take it any longer, you're behind. And this two-year-old has made you behind. But what if, what if you weren't trying to stick to a schedule but trying to stay with who you are? and who you are as an intentional and nurturing mother. And you use that word a lot, intentional. You yeah. say intentional time is not wasted time. That's right, because if I'm intentionally, if I'm an intentional mother, where else do I need to be right now than with my two-year-old learning that there's two legs in a pair of pants mm. and how to scan the groceries? Mm. Maybe I wasn't behind, maybe I'm right on time. Mm. Maybe I'm not behind the world's schedule or whatever else expectations I put on myself to get done that day. Maybe yeah. that day the only thing that needed to be done yeah. was that my two-year-old needed to know 
that I was with him until he could scan those groceries by himself. I love it. I love it. I had a personal aha that kind of taps into what you were saying after I had my first baby, you know, first time mom. We can yeah. all pat ourselves on the back and the, the head, you know, yeah. you cute first time mom. <laughs> but I remember thinking I was in the throes of maternity leave with one child, which now sounds blissful, but at the time was a little overwhelming. Sure, I'll give myself that grace. And I remember thinking, okay, as soon as I do this, this, and this, then I'll eat lunch. Right. And that was my own schedule that I was setting mm -hmm. for myself, just me and my newborn. And I thought, wait a minute, what if I ate lunch and then did A, B, and C? It does become this internal shift, right, that we can honor and create for ourselves. Well, and, and in honoring and creating for ourself, you need to, it, one of my number one pieces of advice when people say, what would you tell anybody that needs to stop feeling behind? I would say, wake up on purpose and wake up for you. Mm. I have a little five minute routine I encourage everybody to do. Wake up on purpose, like set a time that you're getting up and you're not getting up because you have a day Deliberate. and because you have a schedule yeah. and because you have kids and because you have family, you're getting up for you. Yeah. Get up, go in the kitchen, get some electrolytes, walk outside. If it's cold, put on slippers and a hoodie. Breathe it in. Breathe it in yeah. and literally give yourself a chance to remember who are you. Mm -hmm. And if you will in that moment, just say to yourself, I am an unstoppable woman of God, which is my personal statement, or I am intentional, or I am nurturing, or I am bold, or I am courageous, whatever that I am is, own it. Wake up and own your day for you. If you'll start it on purpose, you'll live it on purpose. We started with the question and our final 30 seconds will end with the question. You like the question, how do I want to show up today? Yeah. And that is the question I would ask everybody to ask themselves because mm -hmm. do you want to show up to a schedule or do you want to show up on purpose? And if you want to show up on purpose, then live on purpose. And if that looks like something takes an hour longer than it's supposed to, then rearrange your day because your day's not gone off. You're not behind. You're actually right on time and mm. exactly where you should be. I love this. The boost and the pep talk that all women need. Thank you so much. Where can we get more welcome. words from you, sister? Um, Instagram, you can find me at natty.o.lewis or ascendyq.com. All right. We'll link you over to both from our website. In fact, our website is a good place to go for show notes and additional resources, studio5.ksl.com. We hope it is a good resource for you that is bookmarked and tabbed and saved, and you can visit it often, especially these holiday seasons and periods as we're sharing so many great ideas and ideas from years past too. It's all there waiting for you on the Studio 5 website.